Hi, and welcome to this uh, discussion of test theory. I'm going to introduce the concept of test theory today uh, with the help of the overheads uh, that you see to your left. Um, so, wh why do we need a theory of tests after all? I mean, can't we just write a test and take a test? Well, ultimately, we need a test theory because we're going to have to answer the question of validity, which is, does the test work? Does the test measure what the test author claims it measured? But that's way, way down the road. Today, I kind of want to talk to you about these test theories in a more immediate sense, uh, how, how they apply to tests and sort of some of the immediate things that they can tell us about the ways that tests work. And these will provide a foundation uh, later on for asking the crucial question of, hey, does this test measure what the person claims it measures? Okay. So test theory allows for the interpretation of test scores, what they mean for individuals. And it's interesting to think about it in these terms, but when you, when you take a test, you think, oh, well, it's evaluating me. But the, the researchers who construct tests are equally interested in the test itself, that is, in evaluating the test. How good or bad is that test, actually? And so test theory helps us understand why tests behave as they do. Uh, they help us understand those weird questions that we have, like, why did my score change when I took the SAT tw twice? Why was my score different on two different times? Or when I walked in to take that test in chemistry recently and the hot water pipes were banging in the classroom so I couldn't, and it gave me a headache and I couldn't concentrate, did that affect my score? Test theory addresses those questions. Um, test theory basically proceeds from basic assumptions about tests. Uh, it creates mathematical models of how those tests perform um, and those models are used to evaluate the goodness of the test. Now, there are two kinds of test theories that we need to deal with, which is unfortunate, because if I were given this class in the 1990s, I would probably only talk about one kind of test theory, and that would be the first one listed here, uh, classical test theory, otherwise known as classical true score theory. But times change, and even math models are updated, and so we have a second kind of model, uh, which is called item response theory, and that's quickly making inroads in the field. So I, I feel as if, although we're gonna, we are going to focus on classical test theory, we at least need to know about this other approach, this item response theory. Both models have excellent features to recommend. So let's take a look, actually. Let's jump right into comparing uh, these two kinds of theories. Classical test theory is sometimes called CTT for short. It is the most widely used approach today without question. Most major tests used in the United States and abroad use classical test theory. And classical test theory addresses the general performance of a psychological test or a mental test. The nice thing about classical test theory uh, for the purposes of our class is that it's challenging to understand, but it is uh, comprehensible. And ultimately, uh, I would say, most or all students in the class, most semesters, are able to understand classical two-score theory or classical test theory. The alternative, which is sometimes called uh, IRT, for item response theory, is a bit more complex. It's very much gaining in popularity, and one of the reasons for that is because it's very useful for advanced test development, um, such as computer adaptive testing. In computer adaptive testing, the computer actually chooses which items to administer to a person, and this has the advantage of making the testing session shorter. So, for example, if a person is really excelling at, uh, at a particular ability, then there's no need to give them the very basic easy questions in an area. Rather, the adaptive testing goes right to the hard questions. And similarly, if a person's really struggling with the test content, um, there's no need to give them the very hardest questions over and over and over again. Rather, uh, the adaptive testing goes to the easier questions. And uh, one of the drawbacks of IRT for this class is that it uses complex and nonlinear models, but 
uh, as I said, we're not going to get into that because this is mostly an advanced technique. In my laboratory, where we do some uh, considerable amount of test development, we use both classical test theory and item response theory. We usually use classical test theory as a first pass uh, in constructing a test. That is, we start in classical test theory because it's quick and fast and highly informative. And then if we like what we're seeing, um, if we think we can learn a little bit more about it, uh, we will go on to item response theory and start applying uh, item response theory to our tests. A little bit more before we leave this comparison. Um, another advantage of classical true score theory or classical test theory is that it's okay for smaller samples of uh, ends of 100 to 300 participants. Uh, in theory, the items are standardized on a given sample. I say in theory because these are theories. Um, the mathematical analyses are simpler, as I've already said. The estimation of parameters or models, things like estimations of reliability, are relatively straightforward. And the technique is robust. You don't have to make a lot of assumptions for it to work. Uh, item response theory, on the other hand, requires larger samples. I usually like to have 400 or 500 at the minimum, although I've seen researchers use 1 or 200, in which case I usually flip the page and don't read the study, because that's usually not enough. Um, in theory, knowledge about an item uh, in item response theory is independent of the sample on which it's tested. So in theory, after you've done an item uh, response theory analysis and you have an item, you can apply it to any sample in the world and know pretty much how it's going to perform. I say that's in theory again because these are theories. The scores describe examinee proficiency, and they are not dependent on test difficulty. That is the scores about items in item response theory. Um, the estimation in item response theory is complicated. It uses uh, advanced uh, computer software. Sometimes uh, this is stuff beyond what you might typically find in SPSS or uh, certainly beyond Excel, uh, at least for the time being. And uh, the assumptions are a bit more stringent. So because, item res uh, because classical test theory remains the most widely used model for tests, that's what we're going to focus on uh, in, this, in this class. It's good to know if you're entering the field of psychological testing. The basics are intuitive and understandable, and the mathematics are accessible. They require, at least for the basics, they require a little more than a basic knowledge of algebra. So uh, next up, uh, I will start talking about classical test score theory. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it informative and helpful. And if you would like to give me feedback on it, always welcome.